The content of this podcast is intended to provide general information about Tarion and new home warranty coverage in Ontario. The content is accurate as of the date of the recording, but may later be affected by changes in legislation or policy. The content should not be used as legal advice. You are encouraged to consult with your lawyer if you are seeking legal advice related to buying a new home or about the warranty program. Please visit Tarion.com for for the most current information about your new home warranty. This is SSN. Story Studio Network. If you are a new homeowner or are in the market for a new home, you've no doubt heard about Terion and new home warranties, but do you know how it all works? What exactly is Terion and why does it exist? How is this important to you as a homeowner and to the housing industry as a whole? Welcome to Unpacked, a Terion podcast about the new home journey in Ontario. By law, all new homes built in Ontario are provided with a warranty by the builder. Terion's role is to ensure that buyers and owners of new homes receive the coverage they are entitled to under their builder's warranty. I'm Barb DiGiulio, and in this episode, we talk to Peter Balasubramanian, the president and CEO of Terion. Peter, welcome. Thank you very much for having me. This is very exciting, our first episode, and we're going to find out about all things Terion. So let me start by asking you, what is Terion? Well, you know, I think that's a great question because uh, I think a lot of new home buyers Maybe they've heard the name, but they don't really know uh, what it is and and what the processes are and even why it exists. So I think it's a great place to start. Tarion is the is an organization. We're an independent organization that's uh, created. We're not for profit, and what we do is we facilitate a compensation fund that's there in the event that a home buyer has a problem with their house that's covered by the statutory program, that's kind of covered by the protection program, uh, and their builder doesn't resolve it. I mean, one way that you can think about what Tarion does, and, you know, I think of it this way sometimes, you know, a lot of your listeners will have home insurance that they purchase, uh, and they have to go and they get home insurance, and, you know, they'll receive something in the mail that will tell them what's covered under their home insurance, and they pay for that uh, on an annual basis. What Tarion administers effectively is a kind of insurance that everybody automatically gets. You don't have to buy it. You're entitled to it by law um, in Ontario, and everybody gets it. And the the legislation which we administer is kind of like a, a, an insurance program that's available to all new home buyers automatically. And and I think that's a really special thing that Ontario has. Uh, and then our organization at the end of the day, coming back to the beginning of the question, we are the organization, the not-for-profit organization that administers that process, administers that, um, essentially that insurance program that all new home buyers get as of right. So let me uh, ask you specifically, th- is this just for new homes? or Because most people think of any home purchase as a new home, but this is for newly built homes? Exactly. It's it's a program that's very specific to newly built homes, not a not a resale home or renovation. So it's for new houses that have been built. Now the the warranty applies from kind of day one when you occupy your new home, and it's a seven year program. And if you if a home is sold within those first seven years, the warranty will go with the home. So if there's a new house that's built. It comes with a, a, a mandatory warranty promise of the new home builder. And for seven years, those protections will stay with the home. And if that home is sold within it, say if it's sold in year five, there'll be two more years left and the new purchaser will have the benefit of that. But it is not, it doesn't apply to rental houses, for example, or, um, or as I said, like renovations or, you know, the 90 year house that you, you may have. It doesn't really apply to those. What about a, a demo? and build like a renovation where, you know, maybe they'll keep the front of the house and build the rest of it. Is that, how does that fall? Yeah. So that's a really, I mean, that's a really good question. I think the answer there is that it does not apply to renovations, but if, if the demolition is super extensive, 
Like they take down absolutely everything and maybe they only leave a couple of bricks. If it's, if it's almost all redone, it could be covered. Um, but if it's, you know, if it's uh, half and a half, then it probably won't be. So those are, you know, those are a, a, a situation like if there's a home buyer out there who is looking to buy a new house that is a, an extensive renovation, they can reach out to us and, and ask if it's covered or not covered. In fact, we have a, an email address called ismyhomecovered at terrion.com. Where, where people Couldn't can you have send been more questions. specific? On exactly, that? <laughs> exactly. Because because that's a question that does come up. You know, there's situations, and you know, does the, uh, the the builder maybe keeps the keeps two walls because uh, because the house that they're they're dem- demolishing maybe has some historical value, and uh, and the you know there is a moment where the the purpose of the program is to provide coverage for completely new houses. And that's why you get that you can get into this gray area, and that's why we have that service to to answer questions from people who may be kind of in that gray area. So I want to go back to something you said that if I buy a home that is five years into the warranty, the final two years come with the home. If I am the purchaser of that home, is it an automatic thing, or do I have to register as the new owner of that home? So it's automatic. It's automatic. Now, one thing to be aware of is that, like many kinds of insurance people might be familiar with, the warranty changes year by year. So if you think about an insurance coverage that may have different levels of of what is covered and what is not covered, the warranty in the first year of ownership of the house, the warranty promise of the builder covers the most things. It covers pretty much everything in the house in the first year. In the second year, coverage for finishing items falls away. So paint chips and things like that, the kind of things that ultimately get impacted by living in the house, wear and tear, those drop away from coverage and coverage starts to be more limited to water penetration, issues with your HVAC system, your air conditioning, structure of your house. And then after two years, it it narrows again to be more focused on the structure of the house or major, major problems that make it hard for you to live in your house. And so when we talk about the question of a person buying a house and then selling it in five years, they, the house is automatically covered. They don't have to do anything, but the person who buys it needs to know what year they're in so that they know what is covered and what's not. Is that is that assuming that the seller of the house would say, by the way, there's still two years of coverage left on this home? Yeah, I think I think that it is. A, it's certainly something that sellers will use when they're selling a house because I think it's a value that goes with the house, right? So I think it's in the interest of the seller to to uh, to tell the new home buyer, but the new home buyer can always contact us as well and ask us what year is the coverage of the home and if you purchase a new home you can also ask for the history of claims that have been made on it so we can work with the new purchaser so again i think if someone is 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 planning on buying a house that was new maybe a couple of years ago and is within the program uh, even if it's something the the seller hasn't specified they could reach out to us to find out if it's covered and in fact i think there's even uh, some tools available online where you can put in um, enrollment information or enrollment data and find out, find that out. But you can certainly call our contact center. Who pays for the warranty? So the warranty, so this, the, the warranty program is funded on a, uh, on a sector based funding model, which, and by that, I mean that the new home building industry pays fees into the program on a per unit basis. So if you're a new home builder and you're building 10 houses, uh, you will register those 10 houses with the warranty program and you'll pay a fee to tarry on uh, to, as, as part of that, as part of that process. And that's the majority of our revenue comes from that per unit fee uh, that is paid by new home builders. So the warranty is actually with the builder, not with tarry on. Yes, that's right. So it's, 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 
It's like um, the builder is promising you that the house that they build is going to be built in accordance with the building code. The fit and finish will be of a certain level. Uh, there'll be no material defects in workmanship or material. And that's their promise to you. And they're on first base. So if you have an issue with your home where you don't think it was built properly or you do have a, a defect, your builder should work with you to resolve that issue and fix the problem. But if they don't, we exist as a support mechanism. Uh, we exist as, as, a, as an independent body that you can go to as a new home buyer to get a fair assessment. Um, the builder's not our client, so we don't owe them anything. We approach it with regard to kind of the general uh, rules that we have in place. And we'll even send somebody out from our, from our company to go to your home if the matter can't be resolved and look at the problem with you and talk to your builder. And ultimately, we can make a decision and say, no, no, that is a problem. It needs to be fixed. And we can direct the builder to fix it within a certain period of time. And if they still don't do it, then we'll just work with you directly and resolve it ourselves. So to get to that point, though, is it um, is it a requirement that the homeowner reach out to the builder first? Or can they also reach out to Tarion? What is what is the preference of Tarion? So homeowners can reach out to us at any time. Um, in, in, in practice, almost every homeowner reaches out to their builder first. And I would say, you know, if you look at our data, more than 90% of issues that people have when they buy a new house are resolved directly with their builder. So this is part of doing business. Builders build houses. You know, the house building process is not perfect. They do after sales service. And when homeowners call them, they respond and they, and they deal with it. So a homeowner can contact us at any time. But if you contact us, one of the first things we'll do is we'll ask you, you know, have you had any uh, contact with your builder? Because, you know, we don't want to escalate the, the situation if, if all we have to do is contact the builder and the builder will resolve it. So a homeowner can contact us for assistance at any time. One of the first things we will do, though, is we will try to make sure that the builder is aware of the issue. And if the builder can resolve it directly with the homeowner without us having to escalate it, that's ideally the outcome that we want. And it sounds like that happens in the majority of cases. Yeah, our data, our data shows, you know, when we look at all of the kinds of issues that homeowners might raise, you know, paint, uh, paint problems or, or chips in a counter or whatever they are. And, and those kinds of finishing defects probably represent about 80% of the kinds of claims we see, right? You take, you take ownership of the house and you're seeing little surface defects. Uh, we find that 95% of the time, those do not end up with us having to go to the house to do an inspection and make a call that that once they've been identified, some take longer than others, you know, and there, it's, it's not to say that there aren't challenges there. But at the end of the day, 95% plus of the time, those kinds of issues get resolved directly between the uh, builder and the homeowner. I feel like there are a number of homeowners who may not even realize that you guys are there, that you exist to help them in these situations. Because I, I've seen, I've known people who have gone through this kind of thing, and I, I've never heard them refer to this. Do you find that people are sometimes surprised? Yeah, I think, I think awareness um, of the program is something that uh, could be, you know, ideally everybody know, would know about it, right, before you, before you buy a house. Um, I mean, one of the one of the challenges that I face as a leader of of this organization that's focused on warranty is no different than uh, any organization that is in the warranty space. And and if you pause and you think about it, warranties by their nature are something very few people pay attention to. I don't know if you bought a toaster recently, or if you have a TV set or anything that you've bought when you were in the, in the unpacking of the, of the item, somewhere in there was a piece of paper that had the warranty information. And Barb, if you tell me that you pulled that out and read it and filled it out and mailed it, and it's prominently displayed beside your TV, I'll be absolutely shocked. If you're like most people, it's the last thing you look at. 
Would you right. believe me if I say for my Dyson hair dryer, yes, <laughs> but for everything else, no. <laughs> well, okay, that's a special item. Okay, okay. that's a special item. I'll accept that. <laughs> but right. the challenge is, is that most people don't think about the warranty until they have a problem. True. It's, it's you, you unpack the item, you shove it all in a, you shove all the paperwork in a drawer and you don't think about the warranty until you have a problem. And then someone's like, was there a warranty with this? Let's go. F is it in the, is it in the junk drawer? And you, and you try and find it. Right. And maybe when you finally get it, you pull the piece of paper out and it says, uh, to make sure that this works, you need to file such and such by such and such a date. And then you're, you're saying to yourself, oh, I wish I had done that. And you didn't. So making sure that people are aware of the warranty and are aware of how to make claims under it is a real important part of what we try to do. And we, we approach that in a couple of different ways. We have broad consumer outreach. Um, well, for one, through podcasts like this, but through other, uh, through other outreach that we do where we promote and put out advertisements that try to explain what we do or at least direct people to our website where they can see all of the information. That's kind of broad awareness. But it is pretty hard to penetrate the market. Um, if you're not in the market of buying a new house, you're probably not paying attention to Tarion. So we also have a much more focused consumer awareness where we really try to identify people who are in the space of buying a new home and, and provide directed information to them. And then finally, when you actually go and buy your house, Every agreement of purchase and sale has a warranty information sheet in it. So when you actually buy your house, one of the pieces of paper that's going to be in your agreement is a piece of paper that explains what Tarion is and what the warranties are and directs you to our, our website. So there's really three levels that we use to try and get that level of consumer awareness out there from broad all the way right down to something very specific. Yeah. And I, and I get your example of people buying something and putting the papers in the drawer in the excitement of moving and the stress and the overwhelming issue of moving. Um, unless people do have an issue, I can see how it could get kind of overlooked, but as well, since it is with the builder, the warranty is, it sounds like the builders make the sellers aware um, through paperwork, whatever that do the builders actually have a conversation or, or I guess it varies from case to case. Well, in Ontario, builders are, builders, uh, are supposed to have what's called a pre delivery inspection before you, uh, take ownership of your house. So if you buy a condo unit or you buy a house at some point, you'll have a date that's scheduled with your builder and they'll do a walkthrough. And in that walkthrough, that pre-delivery walkthrough, it gives you an opportunity to look at the state of your home. You can identify if there are issues that you can see there. You can give your builder the opportunity to uh, fix them before you take possession. And it's also an opportunity for the builder to explain how uh, the warranty works. They'll provide you with a link to our warranty information and also explain how, how the house works. Houses are getting complicated. So, you know, sometimes you'll need someone to explain how your HVAC system works and how to manage the oh, temperature right. and the smart system and, you know, how the windows open and close. And, and it's, it's an important, uh, how to change the filters in your furnace. Um, you may not know this dishwashers have filters in them. So there's, there's all of this information and this pre-delivery inspection is a standard thing that happens in Ontario. And, and if, and if you're a new home buyer and you're planning on buying a house and you don't have a pre-delivery inspection, you should ask your builder about that. Because I think that, uh, that's something that if I was, um, asked for some advice, I would say you should absolutely have a walkthrough of that home before you take possession of it. And, uh, and you should be asking when that, when that inspection date is being set up. And is that um, pre-delivery inspection sort of the be-all and end-all when it comes to noticing things that may not be as you expected? Or is that just a part of the process and there are still ways that you can um, address issues that come up after that? Oh, the, yeah, absolutely. Um, good question there. The, the pre-delivery inspection is really separate from the Tarion process. So you, the Tarion process starts when you take possession of your house, when you have the keys and you have that moment where you put the key in the door, you unlock the door, you open the door, you step over the threshold. That's when your relationship with Tarion is going to start really um, in, terms of the, in terms of looking at the construction of your house. 
The pre-delivery inspection, again, is not really a tear on piece. It's an opportunity to get information from your builder and identify issues for your builder so that when you take possession, those are addressed. After you've turned that key and you've crossed the threshold, then uh, if you identify issues, you know, you can raise those with us from from then on basically over the course of seven years the only issue is as you as years go by the kinds of things covered start to narrow down right and right that explanation you gave earlier was um was great i wanted to go back a little bit talk about the beginning of terry and the bill uh, beginning of the ontario new home warranties plan act so these have been around for quite a while which came first and how are the two connected so the Ontario New Home Warranties Plan Act legislation came out in Ontario in around 1976. So we're almost, you know, it's, 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 if you round it up, it's almost 50 years ago. So it's definitely been a long time ago. Um, the genesis of that legislation was a sense that there was a number of examples of shoddy workmanship in the province. So in the 70s, you had some homes that had poor workmanship and they were, you know, you had, uh, I mean, I'm sure there were some extreme examples of homes that were falling apart or roofs that were leaking. And you also had a challenge where buyers, uh, you know, there was an imbalance of power between the buyer and the builder. You know, people wanted to buy a house. They were focused on location. They were focused on how much money they could pay, but they didn't have the ability to negotiate their contracts or, you know, have uh, construction inspections done. And so, homeowners found themselves in a situation where if they were uh, in a house that had a problem and the builder didn't fix it, all they could do in Ontario in the 1970s is go to court and sue the builder. And A, that's hard, that's costly, that's complicated, that takes time. And B, even worse, Sometimes some homeowners who did sue their builders came to the end of that experience and the builder had no money. They were a shell company and there were no assets. So what the homeowner had was a judge saying, yes, you got a shoddy house and yes, you're entitled to something, but there's no one for you to get the money from. And so that was recognized as a challenge. And, and the government said, well, number one, homeowners need an alternative to litigation in order to deal with problems with their house. And number two, we have to make sure that there's money at the end of this, that there's a compensation fund. If you have a problem with the house and the builder doesn't fix it, there needs to be a public compensation fund really there to help people. And that was the genesis of, of setting up the minimum promises that all builders have to give their homeowners, creating a process that allows homeowners to have their disputes resolved without having to go to court and ensuring that there was a fund there to protect homeowners, even if the builder went bankrupt or the builder refused to pay. I mean, things have changed so much in the last close to 50 years. How has uh, the plan changed, the warranty plan? I mean, I know you've been with Terry on is it over 20 years, something like yeah, that? Yeah, just around 20 years, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, you've no, probably been a lot seen of changes. a lot, yeah. There have been a lot of changes. I think that, I think the, probably the key changes I would say are an increased focus on the consumer and an increased overall level of consumer awareness that we're seeing, I think, in all facets of society, not just in this area, but kind of an increased focus on the consumer, which is, which is, shown or demonstrated by increases in the level of coverage that builders are required to promise to their homeowners and that the, the standards that they have to live up to. So on that lens, I think that from, you know, the 20 years that I've been involved in this space, I've seen the coverage limit go from $100,000 to $400,000 a home. So the absolute amount of money that you can get from the program has gone up significantly. The kinds of things that are covered has expanded. So when I first started in the organization, something like radon wasn't really even heard of. And uh, 
and, and, and it wasn't known that it could be covered. And now, you know, we have clear guidelines on how we can provide protection and what a builder is required to do to mitigate kind of radon gas. So that's a new issue and we're responsive to that. And then uh, the other element of it is just the expansion of dispute resolution, making it easier for home buyers if they have a problem to work through those problems. So um, increased uh, opportunities to do mediation instead of uh, going to court, for example. So we have mediation programs. So a lot of it to me is around, is around consumer awareness. The other area though that I think there's been a lot of changes is in technology. So the the discussion we were having a little bit earlier, you remember about the, you know, you're pulling out the piece of paper for your Dyson uh, hair dryer, <laughs> hair dryer yes. and it's it, you've got the you've got the forms, you know, your forms you're filling out, and you're but all of that's changed now. And I think one of the the benefits that we have today is that when you buy a house, there is no piece of paper that you need to fill out for Terry on. You log into the My Home portal, so we've got digital portals for builders and homeowners. The digital portal will guide you through the process. We have digital tools to give examples of what's covered and what's not covered. And so really leveraging the way that um, new home buyers can interact with their builder, interact with us, get information about the maintenance of their house. All of that now is being done digitally. And that's a, a very big, di that's a very big difference in the landscape. I think it's a lot easier today for consumers to access what's what can be a complicated process but it it's made a lot simpler through the digital tools that we have and then the final difference and I'll just say this the final difference in the evolution is i think uh when in the 1970s when this program was put in place it was one organization that dealt with the warranty protection which i've been talking about and this compensation fund that i've been talking about but it was also the one organization, it was the same organization that handled the professional standards for builders, that they had to have a license, that handled their professionalism complaints, you know, the, con the professional conduct of builders in doing their business, and their research and, and education. That was all one organization. So Tarion back then did everything. But in 2021, the government split split the responsibility into two separate organizations. So the Tarion today and the Tarion I am talking about is really primarily focused on the warranty management and the handling of that compensation being the consumer protection organization that provides the backstop for the builders. And today we have a separate organization, the Home Construction Regulatory Authority, that is responsible for maintaining professional standards of builders, issuing them their license, making sure that they have the appropriate education, handling consumer complaints about professionalism, and dealing with research into technology or technology improvements into building. So we have two organizations today where we used to have one. Are all new home builders required to be registered with Tarion? And if not, how do people find out whether their builder is? All new home builders do have to be registered, and the best way to find out is to look on something called the Ontario Builder Directory. So there is a public directory which lists every builder that is licensed to build new homes in the province, and uh, it's it's hosted actually by the Home Construction Regulatory Authority. But folks listening to this, uh, you can you can find this by actually typing the words Ontario Builder Directory into Google. It'll take you right there. And that, uh, that directory allows you to type in the name of your builder. You could type in the name of the principal, like if you know the actual person who runs the company, you can put their name in, you can put the business name in, you can put the name of the project, and it will tell you if they're licensed or it'll provide you the status of their license. And I guess the the next comment I would make on that is if you're a new home buyer and you're thinking of buying a home and you type the name into the directory and nothing shows up, you should be careful. And you should ask, the first thing I would do if I did that is I would ask the builder, hey, how come you're not on the builder directory? Are you licensed? Um, and see what their answer is. And then, of course, the other thing you do you can do is you can call us or you can call the HCRA either. And we will let you know if that builder is is licensed with us or not. How does Ontario's warranty compare to other provinces? 
I think it's actually the most expansive warranty in Canada. So earlier, I, I talked a little bit about the warranty coverage evolving over time. When I first came into the organization, uh, it was about 100000 and now it's 400000 per home. And that $400,000 per home is the highest coverage you'll find anywhere in the country. So uh, I think that we've been the leaders in areas like radon and uh, coverage that I mentioned as well. In, in many jurisdictions, radon's not covered at all. Uh, I think we have, we have the broadest coverage and, and the highest limit. So uh, I think that we are definitely leaders in the space. Always looking to evolve? Always looking to evolve and things are changing and things are changing all the time. It's kind of an interesting space to be in. Uh, housing, uh, housing affordability, uh, housing supply, those are all topics at every level of government and really at every level of society are, are, are things that we're talking about now more than we have before. So, you know, we're constantly looking at ways to improve the service that we provide homeowners. We're continuing to invest in technology and continuing to monitor what our claims experience is to see if there are better ways that we can provide education to builders to improve the products they deliver, uh, better educate homeowners so that they can um, manage their houses better and uh, make sure that they're aware of the things they need to do to, to make sure that the homes and the systems in the homes are maintained properly. And I think we're also on kind of a cutting, like, like every industry, you know, if you turn on, uh, you know, any, anything that you listen to, all you're hearing about is AI and analytics. And there are also opportunities within the warranty space for us to leverage those technologies too. How can we look at our data and what insights can we provide back to industry and homeowners to help improve the quality of housing in the, pro in the province? I think those are some of the areas of evolution that we'll be looking forward, we'll be looking forward uh, to building in the future. You have given a lot of great advice to new homeowners. And just as we wrap up, I'll ask you if there is anything further you would say. I mean, you've already said a lot of uh, great things for people to take note of. But any uh, final thoughts for people who are either um, looking to purchase a new home in the process of purchasing a new home or maybe already have a new home that they've recently moved into? I think well, the first thing I would say is congratulations if you're if you're in that uh, if you're in that situation congratulations and uh, you know I think it is an amazing thing to to get it down get on that path of new home ownership um, but what I would I would say two things I would say number one you know from where I sit I'm always dealing with some of the challenges it's a warranty program after all so most of the things that come across my desk are the challenges. Uh, but I want to say absolutely from a, from a, a, a 50,000 foot level, Ontario has a great housing industry. Uh, I said it earlier that 95% of the claims I see get resolved directly between the homeowner and the builder. So I think that really speaks to the confidence level. It doesn't mean that every house is perfect. Uh, the data that I see suggests that not every house is perfect because the claims do come in. But the industry is, by and large, responsive to those claims and is committed to working with their homeowners to ensure that they're satisfied with the product that they buy. And that ultimately is what's going to build confidence in the new home building industry is the, the builders willing to stand behind what they sell. So the comment I would make is congratulations on getting a new house and, and, and be optimistic. Have some confidence. My data says that if you have an issue and you call your builder, they are going to make it. They are going to resolve it. And then the last thing I would say, but we're here for you. We're here for you if they don't. We're a not-for-profit agency that's independent, and we are here to help you explain the process. And when push comes to shove, if your builder isn't responsive, we, can, we have a compensation fund and can help you. So all of these things kind of work together uh, to me to be a message of uh, optimism and confidence in the space. Great stuff. Peter Ballas of Romanian is the president and CEO of Terion. This has been so interesting. Thanks so much for this. Thank you. For more information on how Terion can help you navigate and receive the coverage you are entitled to, go to terion.com forward slash learning hub. You've been listening to Unpacked, a Terry On podcast about the new home journey in Ontario. 
This is SSN. Story Studio Network.